Well, I mean, poetry is the only art that sort of has as its material the material that everybody has access to, which is language, you know. And I do like language. I mean, I know from the things that I engage in when I'm not writing, which are like, you know, Scrabble or crossword puzzles or something like that, or just, you know, anagrams, those kinds of things. So I think I might be a little bit more wired towards language than most people, but most people are wired towards language, is what I would say. So I don't even think of it as like a... I mean, I think of it as great, like to have this tool. I don't think of it as a as a hindrance that language is sort of my default. And then the other stuff is just you doing like a creative person. You know what I mean? Like I don't even think of my obsession with language as especially creative because we think in language. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about thinking or thinking about feeling, you're getting on the art towards what a writer is doing, which is recording, you know, just the language that passes between us and inside of us all the time. Everything else, though, like, oh, I wonder, could I play the piano? Or I should go to figure drawing and just draw some shapes. Like, to me, those are the practices of just maintaining a, an artistic life, you know. So even reading a novel, like saying, I should be reading a novel at least, you know, every couple of months is part of saying that this is really what a creative person does. Language is just so fundamental to everything that we do. And I, I, so I, I mean, I do. I, I think I am fundamentally a poet for that reason, that I just have to make myself not think about how we communicate. Um, but the music stuff is, I mean, people can become poets without being obsessed with music, obviously, or image too. So the music stuff is a great uh, addition to that. And some, some shrink could tell me the relationship between the two. But I do, uh, I think of music as a way to just like not think about language, you know, a lot of time mm -hmm. to sort of think about feeling and things like that. I'm always listening to music like again the exercise for me is to kind of have a little silence so every now and again like maybe two days ago I realized that I had been in my place for like I don't know two hours three hours and I didn't have any music on and I was like wow what was I listening to I can't even imagine the air with nothing in it it's like water you know what I mean so just you got to add some kind of flavor to it which is how I typically think about music like it's always always going performing all kinds of tasks so even to sleep you know I have like Johan Johansson, he has this 18 minute song that starts really quiet and it's just like airy. So I'm always like, oh, I'm gonna give me an 18 minute nap. So I put it on and I sleep while it's playing and then when it wakes up, I get up. So that's me, even in my sleep, and that's like my favorite. So I have a few more like Alice Coltrane I'll do it with, but that's like, even in my quiet, I'm relying on music to kind of like give me some kind of measure or time imprint or something like that. And so, uh, it's more a question of when it's not planned. And I just, I do, I, I listen to music the way that I think I read, which is just waiting for something to stick. So I uh, always, you know, listen to a lot of new music as well. So, and it's really just to find new music. I mean, you know when you hear it, but if it's not good, it just keeps going, you know. So I'm all deep into like the discover, weekly discovery <laughs> on Spotify and a bunch of other places that allow me and friends to kind of always be encountering new stuff and waiting for that thing that you wait for when you're reading poems which is just a reason to like pause over it or a reason to want to hear it one more time so you know i think my and my uh, appetite is pretty broad too though so there's not a lot of stuff that i just hate even as a reader or as a listener to music so that just means i'm very easy that way so it doesn't take much for me to be like "Ooh, what was that you know um as opposed to like a cynical review, review of i've heard it all before so i think that helps if i'm doing like tarrant stuff certainly it helps that i'm pretty generous with what I'm listening to and, and easily impressed usually by something in the poem or something in the, um, something in the music. So this LA poet, Wanda Coleman, and the book is you know dedicated to her, the sonnets are, and in the back, she actually gives a definition for the American sonnet form that she made up for herself. And it's a crazy definition, like it's got poems, gotta have issues, it's got to have music, it's got to, you know, it's a bunch of sort of abstractions that she's saying. But I am trying to follow them as I'm writing these poems. But, you know, she was like, um, she wrote in this press called Black Sparrow. They actually closed down in maybe two, in the early 2000s. And then she transferred to the University of Pittsburgh because I, you know, put her in touch with uh, uh, Ed O'Chester, who runs the press there. So I knew her. And in my book before the sonnets, there was a poem dedicated to her, um, American Sonnet for Wanda C. But she passed away in 2013, and so um, her birthday was coming around. It was November 13th, the same week of the election. 
and I was trying initially to write poems into it. So I think I was writing these poems called For My Past and Future Assassin because I was thinking about just loops on history. I was like, really, are we back here after Barack Obama? Wasn't that a benchmark? Does this cancel it out or does it make a big circle, you know, in terms of what are we struggling for in the country too, not just people of color, but America? Like, what is the idea that we're trying to pursue in this place? So I think I was unpacking that, but then her birthday came and it made me realize that her American sonnets so her form and her, her notion of that form, um, sometimes serves the 14 lines, sometimes they're 13, sometimes they're 15 lines. I stick with 14 lines, but the gesture of like, well, what is an American sonnet? What is an American? And then what is it, can, what can it do in this form, according to her? Um, that led to it. So what I'm saying to you is like very practical. I mean, a thing happened in the country. I wanted to write a poem to it. I did want to write sonnets, I think, because I was trying to figure out how to not be totally angry, totally panicked, totally afraid. So I needed some kind of frame. So you see what I mean about what form does for me? I knew I needed some barometers on such a big feeling and a big uncertainty about what is, you know, a country that has Donald Trump as its president. What's that going to be? Um, I, I, so I look at form like that as a kind of box sometimes to, to feelings. Uh, I think my third book was uh, Wind in a Box. And there are six sonnets maybe in that in that book. And they show up in all of the books. Uh, at some point, sonnets will show up. Um, so again, it seemed like a form that was going to have some facility for me. Um, but prior to that, and even where I am now on the back side of that book, is I was trying to write long poems. I was trying to write like narrative poems. But like a narrative poem in this situation probably would become a memoir, you know, like in, in this kind of climate and the things that are the questions I have about like the country right now. I think of forms as boxes to put stuff in, but when I go into the place where I hold my boxes, there should be all kinds, you know. So not just a little sonnet box, but a Sistina box or um, a glass box or a coffin or a, a, a burned out car or a small house, all of these shapes that I hope will occupy um, my ideas and my thinking. So in that regard, I, I think everybody is some kind of formalist because you always, as soon as you break a line in a poem, um, you're contending with like, what is the shape of that idea and how is it gonna be held once it becomes a you know, manifest in paper. So um, I just think of it as a way of working. I'm not super conscious beyond that about like sestinas or sinus or even making up forms. Like every form that I sort of play with has come out of something fairly practical. like. Oh, I wonder if I can like make a story happen in 20 small parts. You know what I mean? Um, so those questions are very like day-to-day -day questions more than the broader questions of like formal poetry. Yeah. Poets write everything and try everything as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, so you dig enough, you'll find Bukowski tried a few sonnets here and there too. You know what I mean? So I think like it's hard to separate the notion of form from the notion of poetry. I mean, can you separate the notion of music from the notion of songwriting? You know what I mean? Like those things are so intrinsically, so it's like saying, should all musicians listen to music? And it's like, uh, <laughs> what kind of question? You know what I mean? So yeah. that's how I think about poetry. Like all poets are writing poetry and all poetry has form to it. All poets maybe are formalists on some regard, even if they sensibility and maybe they're, even if their sort of philosophy about what they're writing changes, we're all trying to bring shape to shape the language. I mean, that's what a poet does. He shapes language. That's why we're the ones that break lines.